So hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Authentic Sounds. My name is Wim Winters and in this short video or in this video we will continue with uh, our little mini series about tuning. Uh, I was thinking we should go probably go much deeper into it in detail uh, on, on tuning. Uh, it's not so easy to find a way to uh, to make an overview uh, and um, give you the theoretical background as well as the practical uh, um, tuning itself. So uh, for this video, well, it's, which is recorded in, in, in a row in one tuning, but I have decided to make three separated videos, it will, would be too long otherwise. Uh, so you can skip from one video to the other. I will just continue where we left in the last video where we tuned a temperament in one octave um, the kind of volatile temperament if you haven't seen that video you might want to check it out it, it's it's a very good historical temperament or a temperament uh, to start with with your keyboard instrument so um, i will leave um, the adjustments of this uh, the tuning in pure and impure fifths, we should check our thirds and see that, that it's not too sharp or even becomes sharper for certain keys. I will just continue <coughs> with the temperament as it is uh, to tune the complete instrument and when I, uh, I think on something that, I, that might be interesting for you I will say it. For the rest I will just start tuning and um, so that you, you can see from the first hand how I tune this instrument. Of course, that's not the only way. And as I mentioned in the first video, I'm not a die-hard uh, tuning specialist, but it's important that you uh, that you manage to do it and in a very good way, right? because uh, it, there is n no way you can escape of tuning your own instrument, uh, even for recordings. So. Uh, you have to uh, you have to practice uh, and as I said in the first video you have to do it with your ears it's it's not a tuning device that can give you a nice temperate uh, tuning so we will continue first in the <coughs> treble this is the last octave we did and as I uh, to told you in the first video the instrument was uh, transported to uh, the workshop of Potvliegen, came back and influences the tuning of course uh, and changing of temperature outside. So it's it's rather out of tune. Normally so many adjustments uh, are not necessary but it makes it more interesting to uh, to share it with you. Okay. So you notice that I gave pressure on the on the G sharp, just to <coughs> know how much I go. I have to go higher, and when I have to go much higher, it's, um, you know you have to redo it again. So don't pay too much attention to make the uh, temperament too exact. It, it will it will it will uh, it will not be as stable as you want. So the second tuning will 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 be will uh, enable you to tune in a way that it's much more stable. Typically, a situation we have to choose. There's this kind of impurity of the string, which gives a sound in the in the complete instrument. But well, when you have to tune. Gives the impression of an uh, of an Im impure octave. It can be also the second string that's not that's um, having a little influence on the on the first one. Okay. Always a little pressure afterwards. It will make sure that you <coughs> get the string behind this dead point and then you 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 will feel that you create a margin to 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 give a little bit tension again 
just give him a little bit of room. Okay. It's much. The last one we have to do like this. So it's okay. Good enough. And then the bass. I think we might have changed the D sharp in the temperament as well, so that that, that uh, explains a little bit that all D sharps are so much too low. And B major will be sharper by that than this. Can you imagine? Also, when you have come to the uh, right pitch, play the notes again because it can be lower and the string will behave itself. It wants to go the same way as it came from. So you have to make always small adjustments. stretching these uh, tuning pins of course you have to be gentle it's not so much I do it's, it doesn't harm the instrument at all if you have uh, thicker and um, tuning pins that are maybe a little bit less uh, not so high as this, this one, it might be difficult. And then you have to turn, but then when turning, only turning you have to give much pressure on the Now you hear the impurity, it's the other, the other uh, the string, it's it. You have to check. Strings are more flexible. Okay, so just to continue, we will tune the second uh, row of strings, which is another technique because you have no possibility anymore to um, make this little pressure increasing increases of, of pitch and when, when you increase when you make when you press the key too low the pitch of course will, will go up and so you can check whether you have to go up or down and how much with with your unisonos of course it's not possible anymore by the way at clavichord be sure that you have the right attack because if you press the key too deep and you tune on the pitch that you hear by uh, by doing so you will tune the instrument of course too low because you're pressing the key too deep so be sure that you uh, that your touch is uh, it's quite okay goes to the limit not over the top only for tra stretching the, the 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 string okay i i mostly you can uh, you can uh, um, uh, the, the strings has to has to be tuned up in uh, in, in pitch, so it's something. It's
when the string comes that way, that, that, that far, that's quite a lot. You have to retune, but it, it, yeah, you feel that it has from the first moment a kind of harmonic sounding together with the first string. Yeah, it's difficult to explain, but you have to feel it. But then there's a kind of harmonic unity, and then you may be sure that it's that's okay. If you have to search for the right pitch for the second string, then then you have to come back an hour or so later. It's okay. Although I have to say in the bass part, the strings are more flexible, come come easier to the to the right pitch, but but with first tuning like I do now, they will um, um, go out of tune also faster. But something you, you can hardly predict. So a strong touch. I felt that, this, that uh, I was on the end of what, what I could stretch in one movement uh, for reaching the, 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 the exact pitch. So I just turned a little bit, knowing that the pitch wouldn't change unless I gave my more pressure. So the, the so kind of middle point of the string, I have to look, it's difficult to explain, you have to feel it. So I have to make a new correction, I do it again. So I and then you feel that the string has become a little bit tired. It's okay, but it, the sound is not that dry as it can be. Just leave it. And then the E is difficult to tune on this instrument. It's not. Uh, it's, it's a E flat instrument. It's, it's the size of the. E, I, I think so. So the E is it's just be, be next to that and it gives some some harmonic feelings. That's. Uh, feelings, not the harmonics. That's difficult to. Um, it's how to. I know how to. Like, I don't know how to explain that. It's just, it's just a sound you have to learn from this instrument. But it differs. All, it differs in different instruments, of course. What was that for an explanation? It's a kind of performance that tuning. Has to do with feeling and experience.
Okay. So that, that was a complete tuning of the instrument. I know by what I felt that I have to come back with, with uh, to, to make some adjustments later. But when you just uh, tune the instrument, it's, it's, it's good to leave it five minutes uh, alone. Uh, it's good. It's, it's as if it needs to uh, reharmonize, re -harmonize with, with itself. So it's also something I cannot explain. It's uh, uh, the material. Materials have kind of harmonic unity. It's it's just a feeling. Um, so I have to make adjustments. Uh, it's for sure. Um, we'll come back to that. Also, we come back to how. Um, to tune your instrument when you have a concert and you don't have much time to tune but what what to do then but I will make an episode in a vlog whenever that occur, occurs I think that's that's the best thing to show it to you because then then you have to make decisions about what to tune what to retune uh, what time do you have have do you have the, 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 the time to retune it a second time you have to practice uh, when your instrument is perfectly tuned and you play on it. Of course, certainly a clavichord, you are constantly uh, uh, playing your instrument out of tune. Not too much, but uh, you lose the sound of the purity. It can be a good thing, but when you're on, on, in another place with another temperature and humidity, it might be difficult. So that was it for today. I hope you uh, uh, didn't get too bored with this tuning uh, episode. I think it's important, we come back to that later, go more in detail, detail work something out. Um, but with these three sessions, I think you have had a lot of the basic principles of, of tuning an instrument, principles that can you, you can apply for a pianoforte or a piano or a harpsichord of every, any instrument. So. Thanks again for watching and if you like uh, the videos of course again please hit the subscribe button and I see you next time again. Bye.